Many times, when laying parts on a slab of material, there's extra room on the edges. Did you know you can change your spacing to reduce tool to saw blade transitions? Today, I'll show you how to do that with Did You Know by Dan. When I place parts onto the slab, I normally start with the largest part first. I'll start by moving the bottom left corner of this backsplash to a 0.5 and a 0.5 on my slab. And then I'll move the next largest parts to it using my join parts common line cuts. This method gives me the best yield, which is usually my goal for a non-grain slab. And when we auto toolpath, we produce a great functional program. And this being a saber jet shows the red colors of the water jet cuts to finish out the cuts that the blade couldn't complete. And these areas would be represented with red lines instead if we didn't have a water jet, which we would finish with an incremental router or some other means. And usually, in most cases such as this one, we have extra material around the edges that isn't enough to make any extra parts, so it will end up being scrap. If I could move the parts away from each other in these areas, it will reduce the amount of water jet cuts. So I'll start by measuring what wasn't able to be cut with the saw blade. I'll measure the distance of my red line with the distance angle command. The distance that wasn't cut was a little over two inches. So I'll move this part up about two and a half. And this measurement will tell me what distance I can use any time two parts are right next to each other. So the measurement is a little bit more than five inches, so I'll use five and a half. And I'll use Auto Toolpath Undo to remove the toolpaths before I move the parts. And I'll use Alpha Cam's move so I can move the parts in a specific direction that distance. And I'll select both the countertop and the backsplash so I can move them together. And I'll just click a spot for the base point. These parts need to be moved both in the X and the Y. So I'll press my right arrow key to deselect the value and add five and a half inches to it before I press enter. And I'll do the same for Y. Right arrow key plus 5.5 and enter. We also need spacing in this area so we can move all these parts up in the Y direction. Again, I'll select all the parts so that they're moved together. And finish, and then select a base point. And I'll press my Enter key to accept the X value, since I'm not changing it. But I want to move the Y 5.5 inches in the positive direction. So, right arrow key, plus 5.5, and Enter for the Y value. And this last part will only have to move up two and a half inches because it already has some spacing. So we'll select it, pick the base point, and add on two and a half inches to the Y value. Now all of our parts have sufficient spacing for the over travel of the saw blade. This time, when we run Auto Toolpath, we'll see a lot less water jet cuts because there is enough room to finish the cuts with a saw blade, which is much faster. The water jet is only applied to the areas where it needs to be. Everything else is finished with the saw blade. And we can see the difference in the cut time if we choose Send G Code, and then we can view the estimated time on our job sheet. This program took about 23 minutes. Compared to the first program, which took about 25 with more water jet cuts, which minimizes blade to jet transition and cost. 
Thank you for watching. Now you know what I know. One more thing. Did you know that we have hundreds of resources available on our website for machine training and service? To find them, go to parkindustries.com. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.